Welcome into this edition of FYI. I've been doing a little history lesson on uh, chimney sweeps and have found some very interesting information. Did you know that back in the 19th century, a chimney sweep saved the life of King George II when he pushed him out of the way of an oncoming horse and carriage? So grateful was the king that he invited the gentleman to his wedding, and that began the great tradition of inviting chimney sweeps to weddings in England. Still goes on today. Well, you may not want a chimney sweep at your wedding, but you definitely want a chimney sweep at your home every single year to be sure that you and your family are safe. This program is being brought to you by Hudson Valley Chimney, the best darn chimney sweeps in New York State. So, Bill, let me ask you this question. I mean, do you, do you get a lot of invites to weddings now? Not recently, <laughs> Alan. No, 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 no. Did you no. know that? Did you know that the, oh, yeah. over in England, chimney yeah. sweeps? There, there's, I have friends across the U.S. that are sweeps, and there's some of them actually do that. And they the say that the reason for this is not only brings good luck, but it also means uh, fertility. It's Correct. like a fertility thing. Yes. Okay. So one more piece of useless information about chimney sweeps that uh, I want to share with see if you see if you know this. Not only do did uh, people in the 19th century revere the chimney sweeps. But also, when they saw them on the street, there was a mandate that they bow to them. Correct. So I wanted to know if, uh, pe do, you, do you notice when you, let's say when you're uh, on the street, that people are bowing to you as well? Far from it, Alan. <laughs> Far from it. Especially if I'm real dirty and filthy or one of my guys are. Definitely not. Okay. Definitely not. All right. Now, I kind of alluded in the opening of the program to the fact that you need a chimney sweep at least once a year. Uh, what's your feeling about that? Well, Alan, it's, um, it's also required by NFPA, the National Fire Protection Agency, to have your chimney at least inspected yearly. Even though you may say that um, it hasn't been used last year, it's okay, tiles can crack. Mm -hmm. The mortar in between the tiles can erode. Mm -hmm. um, birds can get inside, squirrels can get inside there, start a nest. So even though you possibly didn't use it last year, something could happen during that period of time you go to light it, and then you have an issue. You can have, like I said, that, that nest burning up, right. backfilling all the smoke into the house. So they want it inspected yearly just to prevent any kind of preventive maintenance. And what was the acronym, NF? NFPA 211. And what is that? National Fire Protection Agency. That's the code that most building inspectors will follow. Um, a lot of times it's a default to the New York State codes, uh -huh. and that's something that people need to, we need to adhere to as chimney sweep professionals to uh, our standards and codes. So what do you do for your, for your existing clients? Do you notify them once a year it's time for the inspection? No, when we come out there, um, we give them a condition report, mm -hmm. and that condition report states next servicing recommended. I see. We'll actually write down here they're yearly. There's customers that burn a lot of wood. Mm -hmm. We're actually, we clean them three times a year. Really? Oh, God, yes. The, 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 it's too much um, creosote building up. They're burning 24-7. And they just, it, it's the creosote building up, and it's just, it's a safety issue. So, in effect, what you should really have is like what a restaurant has. You should have like an Ansel system in your chimney, uh, like they have in the grease traps above a grill, because creosote is the grease that can really ignite in there, right? And build up, correct. And build correct. up. Correct. And how flammable is creosote? Um, very flammable. I mean, if you've ever heard of anybody, or friends, or buddy, anybody having a chimney fire, you'll hear the horror stories. Uh, there are three stages of creosote, stage one, stage two, stage three. One is uh, very brushable, very light powder. It uh, can catch real easy, real quick, mm -hmm. but it'll just flash fire and done it over. Two is a little more stable, and it will catch fire, and um, that'll burn a little bit longer. And then if stage three, it's harder to catch on fire. It's like a tar. Mm -hmm. But once that catches on fire, it's burning. And it's, it's like burning napalm. Yeah. It's burning heavy. That's the rip, roaring, um, engine sounding people hear. Um, but there's a lot of people that actually have chimney fires and don't even know it. And um, they do some damage inside of that chimney, the expansion and contraction of the fire. Okay, so once a year you come and inspect the chimney. What percentage of the people that you inspected last year when you come out there this year need some kind of work? As I said before, Alan, anything can happen at any time. Yeah. So that's the whole purpose of having an inspection done to make sure that it is total preventive maintenance. Yeah, so it's not about from, from this year to next year, you're going to have a big creosote buildup. 
It, but something could happen, and that's the reason why they require the, uh, the inspections. The inspection and cleaning or any kind of repairs that are necessary. Okay. Correct. We've also had um, customers that we've cleaned, and within a month, they've had a chimney fire. And that's from them burning either wet wood, incorrect wood, um, softwoods. Mm -hmm. They're burning too low, mm -hmm. so they're actually smoldering the fire. So just because your chimney's clean today doesn't mean that you're not going to create and make a problem, you know, in a month from now. Do you give classes to your clients <laughs> on how to build a proper fire? Certain people, yes, because we, we've seen <laughs> um, customers calling up that it's smoking, the uh -huh. their wood stove is smoking. Right. So we'll have to go there and actually educate them on what they're doing right or what they're doing wrong. Creosote buildup also, mm -hmm. that uh, the customer can have for a short period of time or one year, we go back and we look at the system and say, you're doing something wrong here. It's either your fuel, your firewood, that is uh, either unseasoned or they're burning it too low and it's actually smoldering and creating a lot of creosote. So there's, a, there's an art to setting a proper fire and, and, and you should know how to do it before you attempt to do it. Correct. It's easy to learn. Uh -huh. um, it's just it's minor, minor suggestions to do to have the right fire. Correct. Is there a charge to come out and do the inspection, Bill? Yes. Right now it's 125 plus tax. Uh -huh. And typically what we do is um, when somebody calls up for a cleaning or an inspection, the 125 includes looking over all the masonry work, if they've got masonry, the flashing, uh, the interior of the chimney. We like to go downstairs also to the furnace mm -hmm. and because people forget about the boilers and um, inspect that also. We like to pull the pipe off and look in and up the chimney. Your furnace people that come there and service your boilers, they'll just maybe maybe take the pipe off and clean it. But they'll look inside and say, yeah, okay, I see, you know, it's, it's, it's got some draft yeah, to it, right. and it's okay. That's not adequate enough. I mean, you need a true certified chimney sweep to come in and evaluate the system as a whole. Correct. Bill, you have chimneys going down through the substrate of a roof. The substrate is wood. Right up against the chimney. Yeah, right up against the chimney. That can be a big issue, Alan. The problem is there is the heat transfer yeah. coming from the flue. Mm -hmm. over many years, 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. That's where most structural fires happen. The breaking down of the wood, paralysis, breaking down happens yeah. over many, many, many years. It doesn't need a spark. It just needs a certain amount of heat and spontaneous combustion happens. Poof, you've got fire. So that's when you see these roof fires, that's probably where it came from. Huh? Correct, and a lot of them happen right over a fireplace. So when the construction first happened, they put wood up against the front opening above the fireplace, yeah. the sheetrock there. Yeah. That wood up against that masonry with only about Not four the wood, the studs, actually. The wooden studs. Yeah. The wooden the studs, studs up against yes. the masonry. Um, there's only four inches of masonry right there. Yeah. And that heat transferring over many years, most structural fires happen right Breaks in that area. Breaks it down. Correct. Good grief. So take a house like this that obviously is not a brand new house. This is a house that has probably 100 years on it, or maybe more. Yeah. They are not in compliance, are they? They would not be in compliance. Is that why you're here working on it? It's, it's a grandfather where the, oh, okay. the, the chimney police aren't going to come in and say, everybody, you got to start moving <laughs> things out and change your whole house That's around. Right. So, but this circumstance here was a different issue. It okay. was constructed in a way where the actually the flu came down, did almost a 90 coming across, and then a 90 back down again. And at that first 90 right there, that's where the soot built up. And it actually on the furnace blocked off the gases. A sweep when we came to clean it, we couldn't clean down it. Yeah, when uh, a lot of these old homes, the way that they used to build back in the day, so to speak, right, was right, right. we need the chimney to come up in the middle of the house. And the way that we solve that problem is we, uh, if we started with the fireplace over here, we just build the chimney up that away. That's correct. Yeah. Nowadays, you don't want chimneys to make too many turns, do you? <laughs> that, that can slow draft down, number That's one. Right. Number two, it can cause residence time, which means it's holding the heat there instead of getting up and out. Right. Um, right now we have codes, a 30 degree offset is the max in the flue in the mm -hmm. chimney itself, mm -hmm. the interior, which behind us you'll see this is the reason we're doing this work. It was not, it was almost at a 45, I mean almost at a 90 actually. Um, and that was causing the problem here at this house. When you come out and do these inspections, frequently do you come out for one thing and find other issues? That's typically what happens. People can either call for a sweep or they uh, may have an issue and they call us. But uh, they're calling for a sweep, that's all. We come out, we do our inspection, and that's when we find most of the time these issues. Do the fire insurance companies require these inspections if you have... Uh, nope, not at all. Not at all? Not at all. Do you get a discount uh, at all for having them? Not at all. Hmm. Not at all. Okay, so it's really 
to protect yourself and your family that you should do it once a year? It's all preventive maintenance. I mean, for you, your family, your house, um, your home. I mean, th this is what you're trying to protect. And um, I mean, you, you service your sewer mm -hmm. tanks, you, you service your boiler. Um, people forget about their chimneys. They, it's the last thing when they restore a house. Isn't that amazing? It's the last thing. And it's the first thing they can put it down to the ground. Yeah. Exactly. And it's the last thing that'll stand here when it's down to the ground. At Hudson Valley Chimney Service, we pride ourselves at being the number one chimney repair and service company in the entire Hudson Valley. Our knowledge and friendly staff has over 75 years of combined experience and expertise you need to protect your family and home. We stand behind all of our work with service you expect and deserve. Hudson Valley Chimney Service is located right here in Poughkeepsie and servicing the entire Hudson Valley and beyond. Give us a call at 845-471-1071, providing professional care with the antique flair since 1976. So Bruce, give us a, a little bit of the history of this house, because this, this is a very unique building, isn't it? Yes, it is. Originally, the stone part of this house was built in 1713, we believe, by Lysanne de Meyer, whose family owned a large tract of land. And then in about 1830, uh, another family had come into possession of the house, and they put an addition on in 1830. So originally, it was built in a as a 300-year-old house, and then there's a 180-year-old. And the 300-year-old part is the is what we see the, the masonry part right here, right? Yes, yes, yes. And this is the addition. And then there's a frame addition. The new part of the house right. is 1830. Right, right. The new part of the house, yes. right? All right. And so this is, but this is a house that you inherited from your dad, right? Yes, it's uh, been in the family for over 50 years now. And this also is an ongoing, never-ending project. It, it certainly is. It's, it's it keep, certainly is. Keeping up with it. Yeah, I, I became handy around the house as a young boy trying to uh -huh. maintain things around this house. When did you first notice that you were having a problem that you needed help with uh, with regard to your heating and the functionality of your heating? Well, the chimney worked fine for about 200 years and then we decided to put in a high efficiency furnace which uh, starts and stops. And, it used to be that the chimney was hot all winter long, mm -hmm. and with the high-efficiency furnace, it got cold and caused condensation. That was deteriorating the uh, lining of the flue, and we had a problem with the draft. The draft got so bad that uh, the oil company said we had to do something. And um, how did you know to call Hudson Valley Chimney? I talked to other services, and uh, it's obvious that they are in over their head here. Mm -hmm. Some of them took a look at it, didn't call me back, mm -hmm. and uh, so I did some research, and I, I wanted a firm that had a lot of experience with older homes and a good reputation, and that's how I found Bill and his company. I heard you say something quite complimentary to Bill off camera about the quality of the work. How did you feel about the quality of the work? Well, I, I was very impressed. They, they came here uh, in timely fashion, and uh, the crew was very efficient and uh, the results were, 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 were very good, I, I just have to say. I haven't had any problems with the draft and uh, any pre-suit up around the chimney where I was getting condensation before. And it's a lifetime guarantee, so I assume that that liner is going to be here long after me and my children. So, Bill, I understand you're kind of like the go-to company when it comes to historic buildings like this one. Uh, you do a lot of them, don't you? Yes, we do, Alan. Um, anything very old and historic, like this house here, which is about 300 years old, um, up to the newest contemporary homes now. So tell me uh, a little bit about this particular house, Bill. What, was, what were some of the issues and problems that you had here? Well, we got called in by Bruce because his chimney, they put a new high-efficiency furnace in. Right. And the high-efficiency furnace causes a lot more gases and a lot of condensation and the condensation ate away the inside of the chimney and the inside of the chimney started falling in. So the furnace company came here, found the issues and the problems, knew what the problem was, and then asked the customer to give us a call. Is that the furnace company's responsibility? When